Hello and welcome to STEM with Mr N, where I perform different demonstrations and explain the science behind what we're seeing. This week's episode is a Halloween themed episode as I'll be making potions in a crystal ball using dry ice. Let's check it out. This week I'm going to be having some Halloween fun with dry ice, but to start with, what is dry ice? Well, despite it having ice in its name, dry ice is not frozen water, but is in fact frozen carbon dioxide at a temperature of minus 78 and a half degrees Celsius. That's around minus 109 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, unlike normal ice, as the temperature rises, Dry ice does not turn into a liquid, it turns straight into a gas as the temperature rises, and this process is called sublimation. Because of this, dry ice does not last very long, so if you're doing this activity at home or in school, you need to make sure you purchase your dry ice close to the time that you are actually going to perform your activities. There are some important safety warnings about dry ice. This is not a toy, it is only for demonstration purposes. You should always handle dry ice with heavy gloves or with tongs because it's so cold it can burn your skin. If you do get a dry ice burn, you should treat it the same way that you would treat a normal burn by running it under cold water and seeking medical attention if required. You should also store dry ice in a polystyrene container with a loose fitting lid. This means that as the dry ice starts to sublimate, the carbon dioxide gas is able to escape and you don't have a pressure buildup of gas in the container, leading to the container exploding. You should also not store dry ice in your freezer, because dry ice can rapidly drop the temperature of your freezer, leading to it breaking. Now, dry ice is used in lots of different things such as theatre and movies and television productions to create an eerie sort of smoky fog. This week what I'm going to be doing is showing you how you can use dry ice to make some creepy Halloween potions. In front of me I've got three jars of three different temperatures, one with cold water, one with room temperature water and one with hot water, so I can compare how dry ice reacts with different temperatures of water. Into each of these I'm going to add a couple of drops of food colouring with a different colour for each jar. So into the cold one I've got jade, into the room temperature one I've got dull red and into the hot water one I've got teal. Next I'm going to drop a piece of dry ice into each of these jars to turn it into a Halloween potion. You'll notice that each of these jars is bubbling and smoking, with the hot water one producing the most bubbles and smoke and the cold water one producing the least bubbles and smoke. When you put dry ice into water, it undergoes a reaction producing carbon dioxide gas and water vapour. So the smoke that we see coming out of these jars is actually water droplets. This reaction works faster the hotter the water is, and that is why the hot water jar is bubbling and smoking the most, while the cold water jar is bubbling and smoking the least. Eventually this reaction will work its way to an end and the jars will stop bubbling and smoking, but all you have to do is add in another piece of dry ice and the reaction will start up all over again. Now that we've seen these potions in action, I'm going to show you how you can make a colour changing potion. Last night I filled up a glass with boiling water and I ripped up red cabbage leaves and dropped these into the water and gave it a mix around. This is so the colour from the red cabbage leaves would diffuse out into the water, giving me a particular solution. You'll notice today that this is a purple solution. One of the interesting things about red cabbage solution is that it can be used to detect acids or alkalis in the environment. If something is an acid and gets mixed with red cabbage solution, it will start to turn a pinky red colour. If something is an alkali, it will start to go a greeny bluish colour. I'm going to show you this with two different common household items. Here I've got white vinegar and I'm going to put it into this small glass jar. Then I'm going to use a pipette to draw out some of that red cabbage solution and drop it into the jar. And you'll notice that that solution, instead of dropping in and turning the white vinegar purple, it is actually going a pinky colour. When I add some more red cabbage solution, that pinky colour is getting stronger because there is more of the solution mixing with the white vinegar. 
A common household alkali is bleach, so I'm going to put some bleach into a separate glass jar and again I'm going to use my pipette to drop some of that red cabbage solution in with the bleach. It's not changing the colour as obviously as it did with the white vinegar, but you'll notice from looking down into the jar that as that red cabbage solution is going in, you are getting streaks of blue in the bleach. This indicates that the bleach is an alkali. Now that you've seen that chemical reaction with the red cabbage solution, I've poured the liquid into a jar and kept the red cabbage out of it. Now into this jar, I'm going to put in a couple of drops of dry ice and watch what happens. As that's been bubbling away, you'll have noticed that the liquid's turned from that purple colour into this vibrant bright pink colour. As we saw in the experiment before I put the dry ice into this red cabbage solution, red cabbage solution will turn pinky red if it is in contact with an acid and it will turn that sort of bluey green if it's in contact with an alkali. Carbon dioxide is an acid as demonstrated by this activity where that solution has turned the pinky red colour that you would expect when in contact with an acid. So now we have a spooky colour changing potion. Next I'm going to explore how you can make a crystal ball using some water, dry ice and some washing up liquid. To make the crystal ball I'm going to start by mixing 2 tablespoons of dish soap into a glass with 1 tablespoon of water. Then I'm going to put a cloth folded down to about 1 inch wide into the glass to soak. I've got a Pyrex bowl of warm water and into this I'm going to put a submersible LED light and turn it on to white. Then I'm going to put in a couple of small blocks of dry ice. Next I'm going to take my cloth out of the glass with the water and dish soap in it and I'm going to run my fingers down the cloth to scrape off any excess water. Then I'm going to slowly move the cloth from one end of the bowl to the other to try and create a film of dish soap over the top of the bowl. This is the trickiest part of this experiment and it does help if the rim of the bowl is wet. You also need to make sure you're not breathing down on the bowl because you could easily pop the dish soap bubble that you're creating. There you go, success, I've managed to make a crystal ball using water, dry ice and dish soap. Well, that's all for this week, I hope you enjoyed it, I know I certainly did. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay up to date on all future content. As always, I would like to take this opportunity to answer any science questions you have about any science topics at all. So feel free to email me at stemwithmrn at outlook.com and I'll get back to you with answers to your questions. You can subscribe to the channel by pushing the button here and I've added links here to the other STEM demo and explanation videos I do, here to my 10 things you should know about series and here to my series on 100 scientists who influenced the world. This has been STEM with Mr N, having some Halloween fun with dry ice.